Hello. Well, today I'm here to continue with the Friday the 13th uh, <clears throat> uh, series, and today talk about the sixth installment. Friday the 13th, Part 6, Jason Lives. Um, now, this is a film in the franchise that's very popular, sort of like Part 4. <clears throat> there are people who, you know, on different sides that say Part 4 is their favorite of the franchise. You know, you say, like, it's the best of the franchise. And then there are those who say Part 6 is. Um, I've actually seen some who, when one says for the final chapter, many say is the best, they are, seem to be confused. It seems like... No, part six seems to be the, has the consensus, but the thing is, like part four and six, seem to be very. Uh, I don't know if tied would be the right word, but you know, neck and neck at the very least of uh, popularity among the fans. Um, and I enjoy this film too. Um, you know, Jason is resurrected, sort of like Frankenstein style. Um, I'll also just show you this. Um, obviously, here is the original poster art, but then here's a yeah. They don't have a alternate poster now, yeah, but they do have, of course, this the original poster art. But then, you know, for a few films here, I guess there are is no alternate uh, posters. Uh, to be done. But then it's also interesting how uh, some of the later ones also have a similar thing where it's just this, but then the back is different. Um, um, yeah, so there's Jason. Back from the dead. Um, Oh, yeah, he gets stabbed with a a metal uh, spike, like from the cemetery he's buried at, which confirms how in part five he was not cremated, um, and it's likely that was just a story said uh, for all the people in Crystal Lake, around Crystal Lake, um, like in the town, to be like, you know, it's all fine, nothing to worry about, he's dead. Clearly he wasn't, but, you know, that wasn't what, uh, I guess, uh, what was decided at the end, you know, what they decided to do, just have him buried, and um, also an alternate ending could have perhaps helped that, but, uh, yeah, this film is uh, quite interesting. It's, you know, it's there's a lot of humor, particularly it's quite meta, which I've noticed for horror movies, it's either received well or not well at all. Some might think it's kind of cheap, some lazy if there's meta humor, like instead of trying to have actual interesting humor that pertains to a film, like a particular scene or something, have genuine humor that sounds like something that people would say or something happens that would be funny, that could be fairly natural depending on the movie, you know, sort of referencing or uh, doing anything regarding the humor of the genre it's in the core seems I, for some people to be very bad. Some people just don't like it at all, and as a result, there are people, because of that, dislike this film, because of the humor, the kind of humor. Um, you know, there are references to universal horror films. Like, there's a gas station, I believe. It's like Karloff's or so, uh, something of the sort. Um, a little while since I've watched it, so every single detail I can't recall, but, you know, there's something like that, and, uh, uh, you know, 
I personally don't mind it. I think that's kind of interesting in how like the director, uh, Tom McLaughlin, that's his name, correct? Yes, it is. Good. Uh, yeah. Um, and I think he does it quite well. This is the final time we see Tommy Jarvis. Um, Tom um, Matthews plays uh, Tommy in this film, but we do hear Corey Feldman uh, when he sees when Tommy sees uh, Jason in the grave before he stabs him with the like the thing from the cemetery with the spike and everything because in stabbing him and his plan is to burn Jason. The whole as he's there to make sure he's dead and can never come back even though at this point he has never come back and likely never would have come back if he didn't return there when he did um, but you know, you know he, he's obsessed with killing Jason and uh, so yeah that goes on and uh, you know he gets a metal rod that's stuck in him, or Spike, I guess, is electrocuted, brings him back to life, and then starts killing. C.J. Graham plays Jason in this film. He does a, a very good job. Um, uh, aside from Ted White, uh, and I guess another, uh, Jason Voorhees actor, I have never really ranked any of the uh, people who have played Jason. I mean, I like all of them. I think they all do a very good job uh, playing Jason. But, you know, it's... Yeah. You know, everyone has a different opinion uh, on who's their favorite. Um, but C.J. Graham does a very good job here. Um, He goes to try and, after Jason returns, and also his friend is now in the grave, because he had a friend to come with him, gets his heart punched out of him, and ripped out. Not punched out, but he rips his arm through his chest and gets his heart, and then he's pulling out, and he just dies. Uh, you know, Hors Horshack from... Uh, Carter, Carter, or whatever. Yeah, that old show. Of course, when I said that character he played, his name, now I'm trying to say that name is the title of that show is now uh, escaping my mind. But whatever, it is. I guess that doesn't really matter. He's dead, and so he goes to the sheriffs and he's trying to tell them that Jason's alive. Of course he doesn't believe him and he knows who he is and his past and he feels very sorry for what happened to him but he needs to just calm down he puts him in a cell and then you know over the course of the film uh, Jason goes and kills people. The sheriff's daughter is there. She's going to be a camp counselor at uh, as they've reopened up the camp but now it's no longer Camp Crystal Lake because, you know, every so often they change the name because people don't want to be reminded of the killings of Crystal Lake. So they think if we just change it every so often, it'll be fine. Uh, you know, it doesn't change the fact that uh, that's the same place where all those murders happen, but that's beside the point, basically. Um, and so as the film goes on, People are killed. Uh, see people playing paintball in the woods. And um, Jason comes and steals a dude's machete. He's cutting through and he has to have a bandana. is dead. And he's upset because he got shot by a woman. And he says, oh, he's blowing up kitchen and this and that. And he's just basically upset that he, he was shot early on and everything. And then he just...
it was also done by a woman, so that makes them upset and they have to wear dumb headbands that says they're dead. Or And as they're going through, you know, they, uh, of course, Jason shows up, kills them, and there's another person who's there who has yet to be found by them, and he gets, he shoots Jason with a paintball, and then he runs away, and of course later he's found dead. Yeah, uh, and sheriff's daughter, and uh, you know, listens to Tommy and gets him out. And uh, uh, you know, he's talking to her, and you know, as time goes on, you know, the, the father is upset with her, and. Uh, believes he's just Tommy's manipulating her and so there's obviously this clash and uh, eventually he thinks that Tommy Jarvis is the killer he has problems but then comes a point where no uh, Tommy had a certain time where all these killings going on he was with her the entire time and well that's kind of hard to explain but he wants them back to the the jail, um, and all the while, uh, her friends at the camp are, you know, getting killed, or then there's, uh, also a couple other people who, along the way, that get killed, a woman who's played by the director's wife, gets stabbed in the mouth with a, with that, uh, Basically, with what uh, Tommy stabbed in him. Of course, that was earlier, but. Uh, and there's an RV, and Jason is in the gets into the RV as, you know, two of them having two of the guys having girl guy yeah, having sex. And this is the only film really in the series where there's no nudity. You know, the only well, sex scene that's going on. You know, the girl's not topless. You know, of course, the only things that, are, that would be naked uh, for this, you know, you don't see. But, you know, normally you'd see the girl topless. Uh, guy has his shirt rolled up and everything, and, uh, you know, the power gets cut by Jason, and then he eventually gets inside once... Uh, after her, uh, her boyfriend goes out to see what's going on, and then they, uh, they're leaving, and uh, uh, Jason's in the bathroom, and so she's in the uh, back on the bed, and boyfriend starts taking off, but he's just going uh, fast and everything, because he wants to see how fast it can go. And so it's making it a bit difficult for her to, you know, reach uh, uh, the front of the RV, and then is grabbed by Jason, and tries to hold her uh, like mouth shut, and he uh, her boyfriend hears some banging going on, and eventually she's her head is shoved into the side of the RV, and then you see it from the outside of the front of her face coming through from how, you know, forceful Jason is shoving her head. And then Jason makes his way up to the RV, uh, to the front, and then stabs him in the head, killing him, and then that whole thing flips and on its side and uh, uh, catches on fire, and then he gets out. Then he continues on to the camp and there's actually kids here this time you actually get to see kids so that's different you know usually it's you know they're fixing up the camp or camp is abandoned so there's no you know kids at all but this time you know there are kids there's a, a little girl who's you know afraid and thinks that uh, you know 
someone's out there like the boogeyman or somebody and that you know she's praying and everything and hope that you know that, that it goes away and she does this at a certain point after she opens her eyes after like all the counselors uh, tells her to do that though of course uh, you know she thinks that though the counselor when she first approaches her like you know oh well you know the It's just a prank by the two who are in the RV. I think it's funny and stuff. To pull pranks at night to try and scare people, and so they're going to try to scare them. Uh, but they can't find them, and so, you know, she goes back to bed and everything. And then, of course, later on, that counselor is killed, uh, as it happens in these movies. Um, but yeah, the little girl's praying and everything, and Jason kind of leans in towards her because probably finds it interesting that this is going on but then of course something catches his attention he leaves and when she opens her eyes he's gone and so he's not around anymore so you know it worked <laughs> uh yeah and eventually the police uh, do get to the camp um thinking you know that's might be where you know, his daughter still with uh, Tommy, and they likely head there. So they get there, and Jason's there, and he's killing them off one by one. You know, he's even shot, and that doesn't do anything, except maybe makes him stop for a moment as he keeps walking. And, uh, yeah, it's interesting in that, of course, the sheriff, you know, he gets killed. And and his death is really interesting, you know. He gets taken, and he's uh, on the ground. He's being thrown, and he's like bit backwards to death, and he's very like like he's always like his back is broken, and his legs are here, and then his head is there, and he's just and, and especially with the uh, sound effects too of the bones crushing it's like oh it's very it's a it's quite a brutal death it's not a very graphic or bloody death you don't see any of any blood or bones pop out or anything like you know if this happened today there's a very good chance that likely would happen but instead you don't see that so i think because you don't see that and you just hear the bones Best I can do. My fingers decided not to like up there, but you know their bones are breaking, and it's just. I think in a more in a way, it's more effective because it's just you're hearing the bones break, and you don't see blood under the his shirt or anything. You don't see any bones stab out of him or anything. You know, of course, today, they would try to do that, of course. Likely, it would have been cut up here, and then you would have only seen, like, a brief moment of it, just enough to see what was going on. And, of course, whenever the Blu-ray DVD would come out, you'd then see it uh, as it was shot, and see it in more detail. But of course, uh, back uh, during this time, especially since these films came out very frequent throughout the 80s, you know, there's eight films throughout the 80s, which means there's only two years where there were uh, no no films. You know, that was 82 and 87. This film came out in 86. Um, so that means after this, there was a year between release of six and seven. Um, but yeah, this is a this is a this is a yeah this is a very interesting movie. Um, of course, at the end, you know, Jason, you know, is taken care of uh, at least for the end of this film. You know, he's you know Tommy has a plan to 
who are adjacent out to the lake has like a big rock and chain to wrap around his neck and he's also pours gas around the boat that he's in and as he's warming because he's you know uh, you know wants to obviously stop and just finally kill Jason once and for all um, Jason just walks into the lake you know like it's nobody's business um, and so once that happens he lights the you know, fire and everything and just waiting for Jason and finally he comes and he jumps out and he's getting Tommy and then he breaks the bow but Tommy's able to uh, get the chain around his neck and as he's sinking he grabs Tommy's grabs a hold of Tommy so then there's that problem and so Sheriff's daughter goes and helps Tommy the boat's still somewhat floating, you know, there's a motor on it, um, and so, you know, Tommy's trying to not drown, and in the process of that, uh, she is pulling on the, uh, you know, trying to turn on the engine so that the propeller, propeller will uh, turn on, and once it finally is on, she uses it and then slices Jason's throat and then that stops him and then it's finally you know just let's go Tommy and he lowers himself because you know of how strong he is he's able to also not necessarily have to he's able to stay above a bit a little bit more and also hold down Tommy and this is a really good movie I enjoy it um, again I know there are people who don't like this film for various reasons. The humor seems to be a big part of it for some people. Um, uh, but also the uh, special features I think is, are quite interesting. Um, and also the new commentary is quite good. Um, and actually it's because of this film people heard uh, early last year, 2020, that there was a brand new box set of Friday the 13th uh, coming later in the year um, and there had not been any announcement that was from a Facebook uh, group like a horror group that the actor in this film uh, I believe Vincent Gustafaro uh, if I am recalling correctly he sort of spilled the beans. Uh, it's just for the actors uh, talking about the film. And so they all gave a commentary. And it's from that that um, she, you know, you know he, or he uh, sort of spilled beans earlier, early in the year, uh, before a formal announcement was made. But that also, that kind of did give some hope and interest of a new set that was coming out. And, of course, this is the set. Um, and, yeah, this is a fine film. It's a very good film. Um, an excellent film, even. Um, this is one of my favorite entries of the franchise. You know, this franchise has some ups and downs. Uh, I mean, of course, you know, there's 12 films. So uh, a franchise with that many installments, of course, there's going to be ups and downs. It's very rare for a long-running franchise to have every installment be, at the minimum, quite good in terms of quality. You know, of course, of course, some will always prefer other films, uh, certain films of the series than others. But you know, there's always something that's uh, there's always a up and down flow and uh, with this film I think uh, this is an up you know <clears throat> I think in, in many ways the first four kind of went up and up and up might have been some maybe a little down a little bit with part three in my opinion with some of the acting though of course you know with that film being in 3d 
they're a bit more <laughs> worried about the 3D technology and making sure that 3D was as effective as it, you know, could be and should be. Um, so with that, there is sort of like a reason why there is some questionable acting a bit here and there, but you know, with that film, uh, it's quite good. And with four, you know, wrapping up the franchise, giving it a close, or at least so everybody at the time thought, you know, I think is the best installment. I still do. Um, then part five had some interesting ideas. Uh, I discussed that last time. I think there were some interesting ideas still, but <clears throat> it just wasn't as uh, uh, fantastic as it could have been. Part six sort of gets it back on the track of what people liked about this franchise and still do. You know, I love this franchise. Again, you know, not a big fan of five, but I do enjoy aspects of it, so I'm not a complete, you know, total hater of that film. There are interesting ideas, good performances, characters, um, but yeah, I think with this film, sort of got really right back on, back on the right track. I'm happy for that. Um, excellent film. Um. This is a fun movie, and um, yeah, C.J. Graham was asked to reprise his role as Jason in the seventh installment, but, you know, we'll get to that in a little while, you know, in the next, uh, next time. Um, and so, yeah, that's my overall thoughts and of what happens and how I basically like what happens took place in this film, went back to the right track, Jason is the killer again, and he essentially remains the killer through, uh, from here on out. Though there is an installment where, you know, he, well, we'll get to that when we do, but anyway, um, uh, what do you think of this movie? Do you enjoy it? Do you dislike it? Um, what are your thoughts? Do you think it's a, a a very good film? Do you think it's one of the best in the franchise, or maybe a weaker installment? Um, does the humor uh, appeal to you in this movie, or you know, uh, are you not a fan of meta humor? Um, I think when meta humor is done right and well, like in Scream, for instance, it's effective. But I can understand why there are people who dislike the, that kind of humor. Sometimes it is out of place and just shouldn't be in certain films. I think it works quite well in this movie, but that's just me. Uh, so leave me your thoughts if you like. And um, yeah, I hope uh, all of you will have a you know a, a great day, great weekend, and a great week. And I'll see you all next time.